quick overview of number one, and then we'll specifically look at 1D in more detail. Uh, consider the sequence 5, 11, 17, 23. So first of all, what is it growing by? Six. So does that make it arithmetic? Yes, it's arithmetic and it's growing by six. So right away, once you've identified a sequence as arithmetic, jot down the formula to find the sum. You have, the, you have it, but you want to write it next to the problem you're working on when you look at the formula sheet. Okay? The other thing that you might need is the explicit formula for an arithmetic. And that's un equals u0 plus dn. And there's a difference as to when you would use each formula. Let's call this formula S and this formula U. Okay, So the U formula you would use for number 1A. It's asking you for what is the 90-second term. There's a difference between that and something like C. When they say S38, they want to know what do the 38 terms add up to. So this question would go with this formula, and this question would go with the green formula. All right? Now, let's get to part D, which is actually what our question was on. Find the sum of all the terms with values between 100 and 200. Here's what I think some of the problems were when people were working on this. I think they looked at it and thought, okay, they want to know what U100 is, and what u200 is, and then add up all those terms. That's not what they're saying. They're not saying in this whole big list of numbers in this pattern, okay? They didn't want you to add up the 100th term all the way through the 200th term. They use the term values there. In this formula, in this sequence that you see here, what they're saying is, what's the first term that you would get to that's over 100. So what term would be sitting here bigger than 100? And then you'd have 100, and then 6 more, and then 6 more, and then 6 more. And they want you to stop when you get to a number smaller than 200. So in this pattern, they want you to identify what are all the numbers between 100 and 200 and add them together. Okay? So here's what I did. I said, all right, well, my formula, explicit formula is u sub 0 plus dn. This is the formula that produces these numbers. What would u0 be, which is the number sitting here in the list? If you went back 6, there'd be a negative 1 sitting there. This sequence adds 6 for every n. So that's our formula. So what I did with this is I said, OK, how long would it take? What would n be for me to get to 100 in this list? Well, it might be pretty far down the line. We'll see. I mean, the next term would be 41. What would the next term after that be? 47. Then? 53. What we're saying is, when would I get to a number bigger than 100? You could certainly just keep track and add 6 and get there. Let's try the formula, though. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, when will un be 100? Okay? When will un actually equal 100? So let's solve this formula and find n. We're going to add 1 to both sides and divide by 6. And what do you get when you take 101 divided by 6? I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's a whole number. What do you get? You get about 16.8. So here's what that's saying. We were trying to find out when 100 would be on this list. Okay, so what it means is when you get down to the 16.8, there's a question for a reason. When you get to the 16.8 term, you'd have 100. Okay, so that means that when you get to the 17th term, you're finally at a number bigger than 100. So that's our starting point, the 17th term. 
So you would find the 17th term by plugging 17 into this formula, and you get 101. 101 is the 17th term. It's the first number bigger than 100. But we have to keep going and find out how long is it going to take until we get to a number over 200. And that's going to be too big for what they wanted. We don't want to be over 200. We want to have the last one before you get to that barrier. So I did the same thing, except in, instead of plugging in 100, I plugged in 200. So I said, when does 200 equal negative 1 plus 6n? Well, this time it came out to be 33.5. Well, 200 can't be the 33 and a half term. So if you're thinking about it, yeah, there's some thinking involved. You have to, like, put some pieces of the puzzle together here. If the 33 and a half term was 200, what term number would be the last one before that? The 33rd. So now I need to know what the 33rd term is, and that came out to be 197. All right? So for our formula to find the sum of these, Starting with 101, ending with 197, divided by 2, we still need n. How many terms are there from the 17th term to the 33rd term? If you started with 17, and you went all the way to the 33rd term, how many numbers would be sitting there? 17. You subtract them and add 1. Subtract them and add 1. So there'd be 17 terms in the series. And now, once you get to this point, you just add and divide. And you get 2,533. Uh, that's 1D.